All right, three, two, one, we are recording. Hello and welcome to the Ivanti Entrepreneur Podcast. I am David Mamano, your host, and we are here to help entrepreneurial achievers and business owners and leaders move forward so that they can reach their potential. I do this by interviewing the nation's best business movers and shakers. Today, I have on the show a great guest. Her name is Janice Porter. Janice, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, David. It's my pleasure to be here. I am so happy. Janice began her career as a teacher. She was a corporate trainer and now has been in business for herself for several years. She found her niche coaching and training business professionals to network at a mastery level and to turn their connections into new business. For Janice, it's all about relationships. First and foremost is her family. She's very proud of her two daughters and appreciates the support of her husband through all that she does. Having an innate curiosity, she has leveraged that into building business relationships and teaches others how to do the same. Connecting people is a skill that Janice uses when needed and only when she feels that it will be managed most professionally as she holds her relationships very dearly. Her passion is working with people who want to build their business through relationship marketing and networking, and she does that using online and offline strategies. LinkedIn training is a huge part of Janice's business. She believes anyone in business or looking for a new position needs to have a professional LinkedIn profile, and that LinkedIn is a powerful, underutilized online platform for attracting new clients, new referral partners, or uh, being found by recruiters. Staying connected and nurturing relationships comes next, and Janice shows clients how to implement a tangible touch follow-up system with clients, prospects, and associates to stay in front of them while at the same time celebrating and appreciating them on a consistent basis. Janice really values the friendships and business relationships she makes, and when she meets someone new, is always thinking like, how can I support you? How may I support you? You can listen to Janice on her Relationship World podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and most other podcast platforms. Janice, again, welcome to the Avanti Entrepreneur Podcast. Thank you so much. So first and foremost, I love, love, love everything about that bio. And the reason is because you said relationships and connecting over and over again. And I mean, that is why I started Avanti, right? Because there are a lot of businesses and business networking groups, et cetera, that are very, they don't go deep. We'll say that, right? You know, when, when a lot of people think of the word networking, they, they cringe a little bit because they, they think, oh my God, do I have to endure this business card exchange right. dilemma, you know? And, um, and with Avanti, I said, you know what? Networking is not working, so let me, let me do something different, right? And Avanti, we do. We are, our, our goal is to connect and, and learn together, right? Go deep, connect, let's help each other. We're kindred spirits. How can we help each other, right? How can we build trust and building relationships? And uh, so um, I'm doing what you're doing just in a different way. I'm doing it with, like, with, with in-person groups. Um, and you know, and you're doing it with, uh, with LinkedIn and you're doing it with send out cards and you're doing it as a networking coach. Right. And, uh, so, um, yeah, and, and you, you, seem to do all three very well juggling, uh, three related balls, we'll say, right. They all, they're kind of intertwine, right. So it's not like you're, you have a hot dog stand on the side. They're all, they're all related. Right. right. Uh, so, uh, so, um, I would, so, and that, 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 let's tell everybody how I met you. Um, I'm trying to get better at LinkedIn, right? I have, you know, 21,000 LinkedIn connections, all very good friends. Uh, <laughs> um, but, I, you know, but I'm not, am I leveraging it the right way? Is my page set up the right way? You know, how, how can I connect with people that I, uh, I could be helping, you know, mm -hmm. through what I'm doing in my business more? Uh, and, and so we were connected. I don't remember it now, but somebody recommended you. Do you remember who it was? Who was it? Wendy. Wendy Thiel, who I don't think you actually know either, right? I know well. Well, I know Wendy Thiel from from the phone and from email, right. uh, and from Facebook now. But yeah, I don't know her face to face. But you're right; she connected us. So very, very good memory. Thank you, Wendy. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, and actually, uh, just to close that circle, so Wendy Thiel is the uh, sister-in-law of Stephen Westner who is responsible for me starting my podcast. Steven owns a company called Predictive ROI. Oh, that's right, that's right. Okay. Yeah, and, they're, and, and, and I, I, uh, when I first started my podcast, I used his company, uh, and wonderful way to, to start and grow a podcast, and, and uh, that's uh, the, uh, uh, her brother-in-law, so yeah, that small world. Sense. Anyway, let's get to you, you, you. Uh, <laughs> first of all, tell me about the journey. How did Janice Porter end up 
being a LinkedIn trainer, a send out cards person, mm -hmm. and a networking coach? How's, what's the path to doing those three great things? Well, as I said in my um, bio that I started out as a teacher, I've always been a teacher. I think even when I was a kid, I was teaching everybody or bossing them around one or the other. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I was a teacher for several years, many years, actually about 14 years. And I didn't, I loved teaching the kids. I didn't like the bureaucracy of yeah. teaching and the, and the being in the same um, lunchroom every day, having to sit in the same seat or you'd upset another teacher. It was like crazy. Their teachers are interesting breed anyway. Yeah. And then I left teaching and I became a corporate trainer and that was interesting because I worked at the telephone company as a business trainer for their outside customers. So the bigger customers that bought big voicemail systems and huge telephone systems. And we used to train them, the end users, the, and also the IT people, uh, or the, they were then telecom people, how to use, how to program and so on, the system. And I learned that from the ground up mm -hmm. because I went there as a soft skills trainer, meaning they were looking for someone to teach uh, soft um, telephone courtesy, customer service, that kind of thing back in the day. Yeah. And, um, and I, being a teacher, that wasn't hard for me. Give me the material. I'll make it a course. I'll teach it. No problem. So that was fun. But then I started learning the, the equipment piece and, and basically kept myself as a contract trainer for a long, long time until the market changed, the public changed, the world changed, and they didn't want to use contractors anymore. And I liked being a contractor because I had my own um, you know, if I wanted to not work on Friday because we had to go to a basketball trip with my daughter on the weekend, I could do it, right? Yeah. So that was my choice. But anyway, my world fell apart. They um, dropped me off the face of the earth in the mid-2000s. And I was like, oh, now what do I do? Mm -hmm. I did not want a nine-to-five job. I did not want to go back to teaching. And I had to reinvent myself. So I, I started networking which was i guess fairly new at the time but networking going to chambers of commerce meetings meeting people and looking for something that would grab my attention and that i didn't have to spend a lot of money and reinvent the wheel so i met this woman who was already very entrepreneurial and she was trying to license what she was doing which was professional organizing which mm -hmm. was very new at the time and she had a, a system in a box kind of thing. And I thought, hmm, that's me being organized, organizing, as you may know from the conversation we had before we got on here. Yep. And um, uh, so I ended up doing that for three years. I, I became a professional organizer. And uh, uh, what I did is I focused on small business owners and entrepreneurs. And what I found out was that all I was doing was really being their housekeeper because they'd have a home office and it would be a mess and we never get past that yeah. or their receipts for the month that had to be processed and so on. And, and so it, it served its purpose for me and it got me out there and I was networking and I was doing a little bit of training because I would do presentations um, for groups in chamber of commerce and so on. So that then led to network marketing, which a completely different model, um, if you don't know what you're doing, God help you because it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And so I learned at that time, it was a waste of time for me. And then um, I met someone who showed me something that fit for me. And that was the send out cards piece. And I really wasn't interested in another network marketing company at the time, but uh it intrigued me and why it intrigued me is because it was a tool that could be used for anybody in traditional business as well as just people who love to send cards and show appreciation. So that sort of, I started playing around with that at the same, a little bit after that I was introduced to LinkedIn and I didn't have a clue what was LinkedIn. Right? What, what, year, what year was this? Was this early 2000s or? Yeah, this would have been, uh, no, this would have been like 2008, I think, okay. something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so uh, I started to learn about um, LinkedIn. And then I started to realize that I was telling people and sharing it with other people. And finally, the light went on. Oh, my God, I could teach again. This is something I can get my you know, um, mm -hmm. my teeth into and start 
using as um, as a teaching leverage. Then yeah. it, so I started to do that, and I've sort of built it up into a, a proper program and so on over the years. And yeah. I finally was able to realize the umbrella of putting the two together, and that's what's really made it exciting for me. So I talk about being a relationship marketing specialist, mm-hmm. online and offline and so on. So that's how I married the two. Yeah. Long story, but that's my story. It's a good story. I think you should stick to it. Yeah, very good. Yeah. And I have so, to say, you know how, and I know you have been, uh, have written books and how most, a lot of entrepreneurs that I meet, you know, always want to write a book. They want to write a book and they're writing a book or the second book or whatever. That's yeah. never been something I've wanted to do, but I love that I have a podcast. Yeah. Right. And that yeah, yeah, it's a great talk platform. to people. And, and so um, that's been my latest venture is my podcast relationships rule. And yeah. um, that's been my outlet for me to, um, leverage what I do as well. Great, great. How long have you been doing that for? Um, not long. I've done 40 episodes, so it's still new, right? Yeah, yeah, that's good. No, good for you. But it's starting to get some traction and it's exciting. You, yours has been out a lot longer, right? I started it in October of 2016. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a quote unquote veteran, right? Ha ha. And it's still going, so that's great. Well, listen to this. You're going to, you're going to like this fact. Uh, the average podcaster only lasts 12 episodes. Really? So, wow. That's, that's a fact. So um, part of being a, a successful podcaster is just, you know, having endurance. Keep on doing it, right? And being consistent, I, I understand. You must be consistent. Yeah, I, I've done an interview every week. Um, barring, uh, sometimes we take like Christmas Day or uh, New Year's Day off because those are just, you know, not not a great time to launch right. a podcast or launch an episode, but uh, you know every every week for you know since uh, uh, October of 2016, and I always have about ten episodes in the back. Right. right, right, right. So I mean, just just so just so so our, my my uh, listeners and viewers can understand. So today is Thursday, uh, January 30th. Right, like we're we're doing this today. But it and, won't uh, launch for a while. You know, I mean, you're probably not going to be on until early April. How about that? Isn't that crazy? Oh, wow. So let's so let's talk about what a beautiful spring it is, and the birds are <laughs> chirping, right? So yeah. Uh, but it's just you know what I love doing it. I love I love doing my podcast. It's one of the favorite things I do. And when you love doing something, you keep on doing it with consistency, right? So, mm-hmm. yep. So uh, let's give the Avanti family some skills, right? Okay. Um, you know, the reason I, uh, uh, you know, am, am working with you and, and by the way, we're going to be, uh, doing some things together where, uh, you know, my, the, the Avanti family, uh, will be able to use your services, right? So you're going to, we're going to, we're going to intertwine you in what we're doing and, and provide, uh, some communication and some relationship to you. Uh, on, uh, on, 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 on working with Janice Porter. So we're really, really excited about that. And, mm-hmm. and if you do, I'll say it right now too, of course, we'll, we'll say it later. If you do want to get connected to Janice, um, you know, uh, throw me an email, david at davidmamano.com. I will personally connect you. We uh, uh, have begun working on my LinkedIn strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, and already, I'm seeing some great value uh, just on, on how we position me, the wording we use, the phrases we use. Um, it's been fantastic. And we're, 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 we're really just getting started. So yeah, work in uh, progress, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So uh, very, very excited. So if you want to, if you want to see what Janice is doing for me, go to my LinkedIn page and mm-hmm. you'll, you'll get a sample of some of the work she can do. Right. But there's a lot more than just what's on the page too. There's strategies on how to use it as a, a marketing tool, a communication tool, a relationship tool, right? So mm-hmm. um, and feel free to go and look at my uh, LinkedIn profile and send me a message request and say that you heard us on uh, David's uh, Avanti um, podcast. Yep. Yeah, that's a great idea. Great idea. Um, so, you know, uh, so let us take the puppy home a little bit, right? So okay. what, are, what, are, what are some some things that you can share with the Avanti family uh, that maybe at least give them a, a, a tune up when it comes to when it comes to LinkedIn? Sure. Um, absolutely. I, I, I'm going to tell you five things that will make LinkedIn work for you. How's that? I love it. Okay. The first thing is to be authentic. People mm-hmm. want to know who you really are, what makes you unique and what you have to offer. So what a lot of people do, not so much entrepreneurs, but people who work for 
bigger companies or for, for companies period. I saw this last night, I was at an event and we were talking a little bit about this. So everybody that worked for this company, and I don't think they had to do this, but they all had the very same banner behind their, uh, on the top of their LinkedIn profile, um, which is the company banner, the company colors, which is fine, but we want to individualize. We want to show your uniqueness. So who are you? This is your profile, not the company's profile. So keep that in mind yeah. and, um, and um, make it a good first impression. And the banner is one of the things that does that. The, excuse me. The other thing is uh, your headshot. And I say headshot because it really should be a professional headshot, not a selfie, not one of those pictures that was at someone's wedding and you know you had your arm around someone and they cut that off in the picture so you know that it really wasn't uh, a, a professional headshot. Um, number two, you wanna create an optimized Actually, uh, Janice, yeah. I, I got uh, one, uh, one question about uh, the be authentic part. Sometimes I see on people's uh, personal page Yes. Or their for their quote unquote picture or headshot, they'll put the they'll put like the logo of their company. Oh, yeah. No, no. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, don't, no, no. I usually Logos, don't. I usually don't approve those. I don't. I, when somebody friends me with that, I, I usually say exactly. no. Right. If they don't have a, a photo at all, if they have a logo, or if it looks like they're at the beach or at the nightclubs, or they're far away and you can't see the whites through their eyes, I don't usually do it either. Yeah. Yeah. Good for yeah, you. No, it should be a professional headshot. Okay. Um, in fact, a girl told me last night that she had what was a selfie on hers and the company she worked for said to her, you're not allowed to do that. Is that a selfie? And she said, well, I guess so. I, you know, and, and he said, well, and he brought in a photographer. Yeah, really. Okay. Thank you very much because yeah, you want to yeah. have a professional headshot. Yeah. Okay. So number two, create an optimized headline. The headline is the, the um, piece directly under your name. And it's the most valuable real estate on LinkedIn mm -hmm. because whenever you like somebody's post, whenever you connect with somebody, whenever you do a search, whatever you do on LinkedIn, your headline shows up with your name. Yeah. So it's yeah. seen in many, many places. So make sure that you use the 120 characters that you're allowed and that you make them worthwhile, that you don't say, uh, I'm going to give you an example, founder and president of ABC company. What does that tell me about who you? Who cares, right? Yeah. And who searches for founder? I'll tell you who, people who want to sell you something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So instead, you want to use um, what we call e egoic labels, w words that define who you are. What is that? Um, what would you say? Egoic? Ego egoic. Egoic You're label. Me a new in, word. What does that mean? I know. It's, yeah. it's like um, it's it's people words as opposed so accountant as opposed to accounting, um, yeah, yeah, okay. marketer as opposed to marketing. Right. Yeah. So yeah. people words because people search for people on LinkedIn a little bit differently than on Google. Right? right. Unless you search for an actual person's name. Yeah. Okay. Number three. Be visible. What that means is. And again, I would not do this until I have a really fully optimized profile. But when you start, when you do, then you want to start using LinkedIn. Be visible means be consistent. If you're going to use LinkedIn, be on it. Like if you're going to be on it three times a week, do it three yeah. times a week. If you're on every day, be on every day. And when you're on, do something. Yep. So be active on your home page, post stat, uh, regular status updates, like, comment, and share, so that other people can start to see you and you start to be visible. Yeah. Uh, number four, be personal, and being personal means when you send out connection requests, make sure you add a personal note. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a little hint to that. When you do it on your desktop or your laptop and you hit the connect button, you get the opportunity to add a personal note. Yeah. When you do it on your phone, I have an iPhone and I think it's the same on an Android. When you hit the connect button, it connects you or it sends the request. Unless no, you don't do that, but you hit the more button or there's three dots, one or the other, and then it says add a personalized note. And so you do that first. It just, it shows that you're showing some interest. You yeah. know, you don't have to write a book because a lot of people don't even 
pay attention, they just accept, believe it or not. And then yeah. the second message becomes more important, the thank you message. However, uh, I, I just got one this morning, actually, from a girl I met last night. And basically, she said, um, uh, where is it? Uh, okay, hang on. Oh, there it is. Uh, great meeting you. Great to meet you last night. Sorry, it's, I'm stuck here. Uh, great to meet you last night. It was my first time at a such and such event. How about you? And, you know, something to just say that she, she remembered me. Yep. So be personal. And the last thing, number five, make new connections. So again, once your profile is fully optimized and you using all the keywords that you need, that you're telling your narrative in your pro in your profile, that you're showing all your work experience, that you're yeah. having some recommendations which mm -hmm. validate you uh, and your business, then uh, reach out and start to connect with new people on a regular basis, building conversations that will lead to business. Now, that of course involves what I call my messaging strategy. So it's how it's it's doing strategic searches, and it is. Um, doing um, your your outreach on a regular basis so that you start to get some traction. You start to get people responding. Then you can have conversations with the idea always of taking the connection or the taking the, the connection and the networking piece offline and building a relationship. Right. So that's kind of the, the backbone of my philosophy. I love it. How, now, how did you get to be so good at this? Did you take training yourself? Did you just l learn and, and uh, take some YouTube video courses type of thing? Um, I did a couple of those things where I, I found a couple of people that thought the same way I did that were already doing LinkedIn training, read their books, did a little bit of online courses. And I also had a young man in Vancouver where I live um, who was ahead of me. You know, he he, somebody introduced me to this young man and he sat with me for a couple of hours twice and told me a lot of things about how to use LinkedIn. And then I've developed my own um, strategies along the way. I, I will say that there's, there's kind of, there's different philosophies, right? Some people think content is king and, and depending on what you're doing, you want to be out there putting out all this content and people being drawn to you. For me, it's about relationships. So I look at the messaging strategy as being really important because there's people who don't have a, it's like they send you a message and you get the message and you think, did they even look at my profile? Right. Cause yeah. either they didn't and they just, you know, took the search list and did the connect thing or they've got a third party tool doing it for them. Right. Which is and very obnoxious. That is people who think they want, you know, a hundred new uh, connection requests out a day. Well, how many can you actually handle? Right. If they yeah. come back. And so I've talked to a lot of people in that industry and I finally found somebody who I think sees the value of personalizing the messages better. If I ever get someone who wants to do that, cause I'm not going to do it for them. I would, send them to a third party but yeah. for me it's about just talking to people yeah yeah well you're very good at it too you know i feel like i i've known you for a couple of months here but i feel like i've known you for a long time i don't know uh, why. thank you yeah thank yeah you. yeah yeah uh so that is awesome so so linkedin training i mean and, and i for one uh have done a ton of business on linkedin um i think it's my number one source of new business to be honest with you um I'm on it a lot. I do a lot of personal connecting. I do a lot of posting of, you know, content. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, it's helped. I mean, I walk into the Chamber of Commerce meeting here in Rochester and people that I don't even know are coming up to me saying, hey, I love your Mamano Minutes or hey, congratulations on your new book. And, yeah, uh, that's and good. so, you know, building, building a brand on LinkedIn, yeah, right? Exactly. And, uh, and I, I joke, you know, from, you know, Ron Burgundy with uh, uh, Anchorman, you know, everybody says, I'm kind of a big deal. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 I'm kind of a big deal on LinkedIn, you know? So, um, and, uh, and so, but it's, you know, right now, I think it's still a very good way to do business. Um, and, and hopefully it's going to stay. I don't know if it's going to get ruined with too many people vomiting 
yeah, you know, yeah. all over it and all that stuff. But uh, then something else will come out, right? So, um, but so far, uh, it's it's been very good. Um, and and you know, the one the one thing I don't like about LinkedIn, and you you kind of touched on it, is um, <clears throat> these these messages I get that um, you could tell they're they're just spray and pray messages, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, hi, I'm. Uh, blah, blah, blah from India. And, you know, do you need, you know, IT and web services and a long email? And I'm like, does anybody ever respond to this? You I know, know, like, I know. Um, I know. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and I probably get five of those a day. And I'm like, my God, you know, so, but you're right. If you can make it personal, like, oh, hey, uh, you know, hey, I, I, you know, I used to live in Vancouver as well. I see that you like tennis. Uh, right. Hey, wanted to meet with, I wanted to, wanted to connect here. Hope you're well. You're going to be like, yeah. okay. You hit a good point there too, because yes, number one, that shows that you've looked at my profile. Yeah. And number two, it also shows the importance of really fully optimizing your profile. Because if you, like um, uh, this girl, one of the other girls that I met last night said in her message to me, I see that you belonged to Alpha Phi Sorority. I'm a sorority girl at UBC too. Yeah. Of course, mine was a million years ago. But, yeah. um, but the point is that she looked for that point of um you know yeah. uh um yeah what connection right? connection yeah yeah, yeah yeah and and so yeah. the more you have on your profile that people can actually find a, um, a rapport building piece that's what you want to do you want to show that yeah yeah well you know it's uh brian tracy who i believe is another fellow canadian yes he is. uh you know i took his training and you know lesson number one was show me that you know me right show uh -huh. me that you know me right yeah that's a good way to put it then you get past that phase and then, uh, then the second thing he said is everybody's favorite radio station is W I I F M. What's yep. in it for me? Yep. Uh, show me that you know me, and then don't vomit what you do. Show me how you're going to help me. You know, and that's step two, right? So I think once you establish that connection, and uh, then you get into you know you know here's here's how I can help you, Janice. Is there some value there for you? Is there a fit for you? You know. Mm -hmm. And if not, then all right, at the very least you made a new LinkedIn friend, you know, so. Yeah. And, and I think that the more comfortable you get doing those kinds of things, the easier and the faster it gets mm -hmm. to take people offline. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, I saw a girl yesterday on Facebook, similar type of situation though. And she threw a question out there about being a new um, realtor, I think it was. And and she was struggling and how could she get some help and what should she do? And all these people yeah. started throwing stuff at her. And I just sent her a message and said, I'd love to talk to you. I work with a lot of realtors and I know someone who does some amazing realtor training. Would you be open to a phone conversation? We had yeah. a phone conversation yesterday and I think she's going to be a client because she, you know, I took it that one step further. Instead of just writing a message and letting it go, I felt that she needed help. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then she told me that, um, and she's American. And she told me that she was thinking about spending all this money to go in a trade show and she didn't have them, a wedding show. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? Save your money. Go look at who all the people at the show uh, that are um, exhibiting are figure out who you might want to talk to that might be a good fit for you to partner up with like a mortgage broker or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And go to the trade show, walk the trade show and talk to people yeah. and collect their business cards. Don't just be handing out stuff willy nilly. Right. There's another yeah. tip for your audience. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now come back with their business cards and then try to find a connection afterwards. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I love it. So, um, so Janice, I want to shift the topic a little. Oh, first of all, you know, one other thing I want to talk about before I shift the topic. So we have a mutual friend now, Teresa Santa, mm -hmm. or Teresa Ashman. I so call her by her uh, <laughs> another name, but uh, remarried Teresa Ashman. And uh, uh, you know, Teresa worked for me for Next Step for years. She used to be my lawyer's paralegal. Uh, and she is here in Rochester, would send out cards. And I, I connected you guys, because you guys just went to a conference in Scottsdale, mm -hmm. Arizona. That's right. I was, I was able to... to uh, connect you guys and you you guys made it a point to meet in person at we the did. conference. So, yeah. I'm very excited about that. But tell us about, uh, you know, for those that, that don't know about Send Out Cards, uh, you know, give us give us uh, the, the overview of uh, what Send Out Cards is. That's another one of your business units, right? So It is. And I, I look at it as, um, sorry, my phone's ringing and I thought I'd turned it off. I apologize. That's okay. Um, You're very popular. Um, 
so send out cards is basically an amazing follow-up tool. It is an appreciation marketing tool. It is something that I believe um, anyone in business should take a look at. So what, what it does is it gives, it's an online system of greeting cards and gifts with amazing flexibility to the point that you can actually create your very own custom cards for the same price as the ones in the catalog. You choose your cards, you write your message, you can send one card or several cards at the same time, press send, and the company prints stuff, stamps, and sends them for you all over the world. It's, it's brilliant. And the best use of send out cards is to show appreciation with no hidden agenda, not trying to sell anything, just please show appreciation. Well, I, I slipped away for two seconds to grab one of my latest send out cards that I just received uh, from Teresa. Uh, so I, I have a, a, a great aunt Connie who's 103 uh, and I went to go visit her and I put the picture of us on Facebook and, uh, and, and, you know, Hi, Aunt Connie. Look, look what I received from Teresa a few days later. So I grabbed the picture from Facebook, uploaded it to the Send Out Cards app, uh, sent me a nice note, yeah. and, uh, and uh, you know, how am I ever going to throw this out? Never. Exactly. Never, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the beauty of it because you can customize it to the point that it shows that person that yeah. you care, right? And yep. uh, like the woman yesterday about that just became a realtor. So I grabbed her picture off Facebook, put it on a card. And I actually chose a similar card to that one about 2020. Yeah. And I sent her um, my mentor's book, mm -hmm. um, The Power of Human Connection. Yeah. And uh, um, it's just easy to do, right? And yep. show people you care. And I think the, the very biggest reason that this company came to be was to allow people to act on their promptings. So, right. you know, and you say, Oh my God, I need to send so-and-so a card. And then you have to go to the store, get the card, get the stamp, mail it. And mm -hmm. by the time you do that, the prompting has passed. Right. Yeah. Right. So this allows you to do that uh, very easily. Yeah. But again, there, there's the personal side and then there's the business side. Okay. Right. So there's two ways to use it. Yep. Uh, yeah. Now, thank you for that explanation. So before we go, we're going to get into some fun parts. So you, you may know uh, that I just uh, published a, 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 my third book. It's called Crash and Learn. Uh -huh. uh, and I published it with another Canadian. God, I love Canadians, I guess. Huh? Uh, Suzanne I know, Doyle. right? Yeah, you know, Suzanne Doyle Ingram, yeah. who I, I believe is in your neck of the woods, right? She is, yeah. There's a company called Prominence Publishing, and yeah. uh, we publish she's a book. Hysterical. She's hysterical. Oh, she's hysterical. wonderful. She's yeah. wonderful. Uh, but we got this uh, anthology book. We got 10 authors uh, writing about their stories when they were on top, fell down, came back up again. Mm -hmm. Some people say crash and burn. We yeah. said crash and learn. <laughs> Yeah. Um, how about you? Do you do you have a, a story that you can share with us where you were kind of thought you were down and out, but you, you you came back swinging? Boy, I don't know if I've had that many um, uh, highs and lows in in my career. You've been pretty um, steady, huh? Well, steady, but maybe not as 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 much as I would like to. You know, I, I run the. I kind of go this fine line between. And I think it's fear, okay? I think fear has often gotten in the way for me to not take me to that next level. Yeah. Um, and now, and you mentioned that I, my family is so important to me, which it is, and my two yeah. daughters um, and my husband, but I now have a new granddaughter who's six months old. And wow, she's congratulations. And apple of my eye and yeah, yeah. Um, have wanted and you know prayed for a granddaughter for, or for a grandchild for a long time. Yeah. So. Yeah it takes your perspective away from, you know, I'm working all the time. Like yesterday, my daughter phoned me and said, um, what are you doing? Well, I'm working, right? They still don't get that, but then- right. uh, But you're oh, at home. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So um, I, she said, can you meet me for coffee after my tots and tunes class? And I said, of course, because I get to hug my granddaughter, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't want to um, see you, but I want to see the granddaughter, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And can you see why? Oh, oh, for those of you watching this on YouTube, uh, it's very cute little Santa Claus. How cute. Yeah, yeah. She's adorable. Anyway, yeah. so um, 
gosh, I was actually talking about something yesterday that may be a, uh, the answer to that question. It wasn't a crash and burn, but it was a lesson learned. I was interviewing someone on my podcast who is in PR mm -hmm. and she teaches people how to, you know, uh, do those PR things that one needs to do to grow their business. And I was, it, it made me think back to a time when I was doing some events and I was doing an event for a friend of mine who was a producer of a TV show in, in LA that was, um, I'm going to show my age again, but it was definitely before Dancing with the Stars and it was a dancing kind of competition show. Mm -hmm. It's a funny story actually. And uh, it was set up like um, uh, three celebrity judges and you had all these amateur dancers and they had to pick who was going to go to the show in LA, who was going to yeah. go to the final show. So he said, why don't you um, do uh, auditions for me in Vancouver? You can make a little bit of money. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. I don't know how to. He said, you'll do fine. And I was a teacher at the time. So I went by, you know, teacher by day, you know, um, dance uh, promoter by night kind of thing. And I found a club and I got all these amateur people to come. Mm -hmm. And I had some celebrity, local celebrities who uh, came and were my judges this, I did it twice. The second time I did it, the girl that was the newspaper mm -hmm. uh, dance critic couldn't come. So she sent one of her um, cohorts from the local newspaper and yeah. he had never done this before. And he did like crime reporting and stuff like that. So he really wasn't anyway. So it wasn't a complete contest. It was yeah. more a show, right? And so you had to gear the judges to the people that they needed on the show like when they right. got enough jive dancers now they need someone who does something different right, right. Yeah, so yeah. i was trying to skew the the results by telling them things like this well yeah. he wrote an article about me in the paper the next day that i thought was going to be the end of my world because mm. of what i had done yeah and and it just devastated me i was in tears because my reputation and blah 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 but then I realized afterwards that it's here one minute and it's gone the next, right? People right. forget they're on to the next thing. Yeah. So I thought I'd crashed and burned just to tell you, it's just a little story, but. Right. Yeah. All right. Good, good. Well, uh, to it, is any video of that or, or any, you yeah. know? God, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, before, the, sh the before, show is before. probably still on uh, something around and would show who came from Vancouver. Right, right. Very cool. Uh, yeah, uh, lucky to, there were no smartphones back then, right? So, yeah. <laughs> well, Janice, this has been fantastic. Thank you again for your uh, tips on, especially LinkedIn. I thought it was really great about uh, how to use LinkedIn as a connecting tool and a marketing tool. Number one, be authentic. Number two, optimize your headline. Number three, be visible. Number four, be personal. And number five, make new connections. Um, you know, Janice, if people want to connect with you and learn more and maybe mm -hmm. work with you on LinkedIn and some other mm -hmm. things that you have going on, what's the best way to, what, what is the best way to connect with you? The best way is probably to go to my website, Janice Porter, J-A-N-I-C-E, JanicePorter.com. They can send me a message to Janice at JanicePorter.com. They can, and I'll, uh, one more thing that they can do on my website is download a free 16 point checklist about LinkedIn. And mm -hmm. they can also see what my op, what my um, packages are. And if they want to work with me, I'm always open to a conversation. They can connect with me on LinkedIn, which is LinkedIn slash Janice Porter. You'll find me. And, um, and yeah, if it's not a fit, it's not a fit, but you don't know yeah. unless you have a conversation. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I would say, uh, be a great way to connect with you on LinkedIn and send you a personal message yeah, that, uh, absolutely. that yeah. Hey, Hey Janice, you did a great job on the Avanti Entrepreneur podcast, <laughs> right? I love And you'll you respond to that, right? So yeah, absolutely. And I love working with entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. We are, uh, we're, we're crazy, but fun, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And sometimes we even show up on time for appointments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> That's an inside joke between Janice and myself. So <laughs> you can imagine who didn't show up on time. So, but uh, Janice, thank you so much. Truly appreciate your time and everything that you're putting into the world and, um, and, and everything special that you're doing uh, for the Avanti family with your LinkedIn training. We appreciate everything. Glad to have you on the show and, uh, and have you more, more connected with, with the Avanti family as well. So, and I wish you massive continued success. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure, David. Thank appreciate you. It. And thanks for everyone listening 
to the Ivanti Entrepreneur Podcast. If you like this interview and you want to hear dozens more, um, you want to learn more about Avanti, our events, et cetera, we actually have a great, great learning library, tons of stuff over there, avantientrepreneur.com. And you could also get in touch with me. I would love to help you anyway, too. And you, there's a link to my new book, Crash and Learn. You could buy that as well. Janice, thanks again. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day and make sure to stay awesome. <laughs>